This is a 100 RMB note from the People's Bank of China. And while all of us around the world are familiar with paper currency, China has largely shifted to becoming a completely cashless society, with digital payments now accounting for over 85% of transactions in China. Ironically, it was China that first invented paper currency back in the 7th century, and now China is leading the world in a new venture, a central bank digital currency. I recently sat down with American expat Richard Turin, author of Cashless, China's Digital Currency Revolution, to record an episode of Real Talk China. Today's video is a preview of that episode, and in this video, we're going to explain everything you need to know about China's digital currency in less than 10 minutes. Let's begin. We are the transitional generation going from paper money, credit cards, that was mm -hmm. a transition, to now the next great transition for money, cash becoming digital. The exact name for the new digital currency is a central bank digital currency. And the most right. important words are central bank, meaning that this is a digital currency that is specifically issued by a country, in this case, China's central bank. This is a digital version of a paper 100 RMB or 50 RMB note. When you use WeChat and Alipay, you're really looking at a balance in an account somewhere. Correct. So your money, per se, is not on your phone. Your money is actually in an account. Right. And you're seeing the balance on your phone. Correct. Now, with digital currency, if you see that you have 100 RMB on your phone, you actually have a long string of characters. That is the, the digital representation, the money that is physically on your phone. PBOC has been very clear. The wallet you will use digital currency with is WeChat and Alipay, but the currency on the wallet is the central bank digital currency. But the usage of WeChat and Alipay will still be tremendous because they built what we call sticky platforms, platforms that you use for so much of your life that you don't want to leave these platforms. Absolutely. So you will use central bank digital currency on WeChat and Alipay. This will bring new products, new services to WeChat and Alipay and probably right. make them even more important than they already are. But they're going to be systemically important payment platforms for many years to come. Absolutely. And central bank digital currency needs them to become popular. Central banks across the world hold foreign currency deposits and reserve currencies travel along predefined banking paths. So here comes China's central bank digital currency. The path that it uses to travel from person to person or from business to business is a new and different path. What really, if you think about it, we have the RMB already. It exists. Right. So people know about RMB. What we're doing is we're creating a new RMB that has a brand new digital transfer mechanism underneath it. The digital RMB can become very successful in international trade, but without ever impacting central bank holdings. The Perfect. digital RMB will not, nor was it designed by the PBOC, and no one from the PBOC has ever said the digital RMB is designed to eliminate dollar use. They have been clear. It is designed to reduce China's dependence on the dollar. What you're looking at is a means of conducting trade that is not a dollar, that, can, that is conducted on its own what we call payment rails, this new digital payment system. And it allows China to be independent from Western banks. It allows them to conduct business, particularly with BRI and developing countries who can now conduct 
business directly with China in digital RMB. It'll be cheap. It'll be efficient. It'll be a game changer for trade for many parts of the world with China. It's right. going to be very significant, yeah. even if it's even if it's not designed specifically to replace the dollar. Right. It will displace a reasonable, a significant percentage of dollar trade. The digital RMB is an entry ticket or an entry token into something new, China's digital logistics network. Many in the finance community are simply looking at digital RMB as another form of money. Right. And what they're not seeing is that it comes with something very important attached, and that is this digital logistics system which is already being built and it's digital trade finance and it's digital shipping. It's the whole ecosystem, right? It's not just a, a new currency. It's the whole system that goes with that currency that's being developed. And yep. that's what people are missing. It's really a transformation into this smart logistics, uh, intelligent logistics, which the rest of the world hasn't made yet. SWIFT and the money transfer system that has been in place since end of World War II has served the globe tremendously well. And there's no question it's a great system. Unfortunately, with SWIFT, there are charges. You know, yeah. it's expensive. Absolutely. So, you know, we're, we're looking at a digital world where I want my money to flow on digital networks as freely and easily as um, WeChat and Alipay or as email. And that's the world that we have to look forward to where our money is much more fluid and much more mobile and without the charges associated. People who love cryptocurrency tend to focus on freedom of money and freedom of flow and the lack of government control. They tend not to like central bank digital currency. So there right. are two different universes. They are going to peaceably coexist with one another. People who use money every day in places like China will use central bank digital currency, just as they will in Sweden and other countries. And if yeah. they like crypto, they're free to buy crypto. Let them buy it. One is not going to lead to the destruction of the other. They will exist peaceably in different universes. So Sweden is looking at it. The UK for the Bitcoin is looking at it. The EU is looking at it. All 83% of the central banks in the world right now have a, a project underway. Probably the furthest along other than China would be Sweden. Uh, oh, by the way, Canada. Canada has a, uh, a big project. And actually, the, Canada's project is further along than the United States uh, project. So it's interesting okay. to watch. In 2020, the total number of overdraft charges from banks to citizens was something like $30 billion. Some percentage of this $30 billion, which is usually assessed on the poorest part of America's population, right. would be eliminated if we had central bank digital currencies. Because I see the good that digital currency did in China for poorer populations. I think that they can do, digital payment can do the same in the United States. What China has to show is that there is an advantage to trading with China using digital RMB as opposed to using traditional banking systems. Right. So, and, and I think that when you look at this digital logistics system, when you look at the speed with which you can convert currency into digital and back with low cost, low fee, I think that that will be an inducement for people in other countries to trade in a digital RMB. I understand that there's a group in your audience who is looking at me or listening to this and saying, I don't ever want to use a digital RMB as long as I live. Even if you're in that group, we all owe China a debt because because they are the first major country to put forward a digital RMB, they have 
helped the U.S., the U.K., EU, all push forward many years their digital currency projects. So they are helping all of us to bring what I think is fantastic digital future closer. If you don't like digital RMB, that's fine. But we all owe a debt of gratitude to China for helping bring it closer so that we can all use it. The day is coming where we will be able to transfer money digitally for free or extremely low cost. Digital currencies between countries will be traded. It'll be a better place. And that's good. So that's this cool. is we should all be optimistic about this. Everyone, thank you for watching today's preview episode. I hope you come back to the channel and watch the full 45 minute interview that I have with Richard Turin as we really break down all of the details involved in China's central bank digital currency and how it's going to affect the future of our money, our banking systems, and most importantly, the world that we live in today. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for future notifications. Everyone, my name is Cyrus. Thank you for your continued support and I look forward to seeing all of you in a future video.